Uh, our first performer uh, this, this afternoon uh, is Pat Rothfuss. Uh, we're so happy to have him here. He is, uh, he is uh, the author of the King Killer Chronicle, uh, a series of fantasy books that began with uh, The Name of the Wind, supposedly a trilogy, but I'm going to see two books. <laughs> Hope oh, we're not uh, developing a little uh, George R. R. Martin. <laughs> but yes, yeah, he's not my bitch, I know. He's not read the third book, that's all. Uh, he also runs a fantastic charity called uh, uh, World Builders. Woo! He has a lot of money for Heaven International. Please welcome to the stage, Pat Rothfuss. So, maybe what we'll do here, who's 
considered the guinea pig thing? Let me see my show of hands. Okay, let's lead off with that. Let's just establish some common ground for all of us here. Um, I, like I said, I went to college for about 10 years uh, as an undergrad. Which, I mean, it's funny, but it's not a joke to actually say that. And I wrote a, a humor column. Actually, uh, it started as an advice column. And, uh, and then it became a humor column pretty quickly. Because I realized, for one, it's, it's easier to write. And it's just, well, like, you write in and you ask for advice, right? And I give you advice. And it's terrible. Uh, well, no, yeah, I, I lose good advice. But the truth is, you don't want good advice. You want me to tell you to do whatever, make a bad choice that's what you really wanted to do anyway, right? So you're maybe interested, maybe. And then there's some of you that, like, have kind of a grubby, voyeuristic thing. You love hearing about other people's problems. So you're interested in that. And everybody else just doesn't give it. But if you write in, and then I make fun of you. Like, everybody is really entertained by that, except for you. And it just, like, statistically, it's much better writing. So, uh, I did that for, for about 10 years uh, before, uh, before I ever uh, dreamed of being published for my fantasy novels. And uh, it, we dealt with hard-hitting issues like which are better fast zombies or slow zombies? Uh, how do I deal with my ex-girlfriend? Stuff like that, you know? Real cutting-edge socio-political problems. Um, and so here is, here is one that I'm rather fond of. Dear Pat, this is the letter portion. I live in the dorms and I want to have a pet. But they say the only pets we can have are fish. And fish suck. You can't play or cuddle with a fish. I don't want a dog or anything, just like a hamster. What's the difference, really? They both live in an aquarium, right? And it's signed, Pretty Emotional Toward Mammal Embargoes, which acronyms down very cleverly to pet me. <laughs> which I, at the time, didn't read anything into, but now I always kind of wonder. <laughs> and my response is as follows. Well, Petney, when I lived in the dorms, I too felt the desire for something mammalian to cuddle. However, since I horrify most women, I decided to buy an animal that was required to love me or face starvation. A pet, in other words. So I bought two guinea pigs and an aquarium. I called them Mr. Fluffins and Squeaky Feet. They were teddy bear short hairs, cute as bugs. How did I deal with the dorm rule against pets? Simple. I ignored it. This worked for about two months until my RA saw them. He told me I'd have to get rid of them, and I agreed. Then I got back to ignoring the rule. <laughs> this worked really well for another month until he saw them again. Now we've got a bit of script-style dialogue here. Him. You said you were going to get rid of those. Me. Get rid of what? <laughs> Him. Those. Me. I got rid of the old ones. Those are new ones. <laughs> Him, you can't have any pets that fish. Me, they aren't pets, they're food. I'm fattening them up. <laughs> Him, listen, there are rules. Me, in Thoreau's concept of civil disobedience, <laughs> it's every citizen's duty to oppose unjust laws. Him, I'm getting the hall director. <laughs> so about 10 minutes later, the hall director comes by and he says, you can have pets in the dorms. It says right in the handbook. Me. Except fish. Him. Right. Except fish. Me. Those are fish. <laughs> Him. Those are guinea pigs. Me. Prove it. <laughs> so he leaves and he comes back with a dictionary and he's like, Here, a fish. An aquatic animal. Me. They're aquatic. Him. Prove it. (laughs) 
They only have this one. See, I'm the king of broken promises. <laughs> that would be a real piece of postmodern art. I could just go through, read like the first two thirds of a bunch of different things. <laughs> that probably doesn't sound as fun to you as it sounds to me. <laughs> Way to break the narrative flow out of this. Okay. So I leave, and I come back carrying my neighbor's 10-gallon aquarium. It's full of water, plastic plants, and several confused neon tetras named after the various stooges. Now, at this point, you need to know something. Squeaky Pete was everything you could want in a guinea pig. He was loving, cuddly, playful. Mr. Fluffins, however, was standoffish. He would occasionally give me this snobby look as if he really didn't approve of my lifestyle. <laughs> A few days ago, he and I had had a talk about how he might more willingly embrace the role of loving pet. At the end of the talk, I thought we were in agreement, but when I picked him up afterwards, he made me on my hand. <laughs> so, with my hall director standing there, I picked up Mr. Fluffins, dusted the cedar chips off, and dropped him in the aquarium. <laughs> and he squeaked a little, and then he started to swim. The hall director said, Aquatic means they live underwater, swimming around, doesn't count. So, turning to look my hall director in the eye, I took Mr. Fluffins in a firm grip and pushed him underwater. <laughs> Sweet mother of fuck, he said, what are you doing? <laughs> I was showing you my fish. I said it calmly, still looking him in the eye. Mr. Fluffins and the Stooges started some improv comedy that lasted for five seconds, ten seconds, fifteen seconds. I didn't look away from the hall director. His eyes were huge and he was sweating. I didn't blink. Fine, it's a fish! <laughs> Mr. Fluffins out of the tank, squeezed him out, then wrapped him in a towel and put him on my roommate's bed just in case he decided to puke. <laughs> and after that, pet me, the hall director never gave me any trouble at all. Best of all, Mr. Fluffins became the perfect pet. <laughs> For about three weeks, then he tried to shiv me in my sleep. <laughs> after that, we had another talk during which he made me on my hand yet again. So I killed him, ate him, and made his skin into a little hat that I wear to this day. 